Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this Mastering IT Support Delivery webinar today. Um, I'm really looking forward to today's session because I don't know, don't know if some of you have been on our previous webinars, but it's usually just me. But uh, now I have the uh, the luxury of the company of another, and uh, Noel Bruton will be joining us to to introduce the the Mastering IT Support Delivery um, certification, the qualification scheme, the, the 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 syllabus overall, the curriculum. Noel uh, is the lead author of, uh, of of the said scheme, and, and he's going to bring to you an awful lot of his insight today. Can you hear me, Noel? Just a, a quick sound check for you. I can, yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you loud and proud. So we will. I'll do, give you a chance to give a formal introduction shortly, but just uh, um, just box off some some administrative stuff. Um, so. Uh, you should all, should all be able to hear myself and Noel, but but we can't hear any of you guys. So it's deliberate that, uh, that all of your mics are muted. We can't we can't see you guys. Uh, but if you do have any questions, then I want to actively encourage you to to put those forward. So you have the the meeting chat facility for you to to post any of those those questions in, and uh, we may pick up on them as we go through. I suspect we'll probably leave them till till the end, where we have a we have time allocated for a question and answer session so we'll we'll gladly take those uh, those questions and, and and answer them to the best of our ability um i am recording today's session so it is my intention um at some point probably this afternoon that i will uh, send you all an email with uh, with the, a copy of the the recording which will be posted on our, our youtube channel um, so feel free to distribute that amongst your uh, amongst your colleagues, um, and I will also provide you with copies of the, the slides for uh, for your reference as well after the event. So so you should all receive an email from me with with all of that information. Um, we've got an hour scheduled. We'll, we'll we'll see how well we go. We'll see how many questions you have at the end, but. Uh, but yeah, primarily we're we're here to to introduce the mastering IT support delivery curriculum, and that's the the focus of today's session. Um, again, I always say this that it's always nice to see some familiar names connect onto the session, along with some some names that I'm not so familiar with, some some new people to us. So. Um, just a bit of uh, a brief background into into who Sysop are. I mean, um, it's it, it, myself, Adam Saul. I'm representing Sysop today, um, and uh, I, I'm one of the, the, the directors at Sysop. I spend much of my time working with our clients, um, trying to help them uh, uh, adopt and adapt to to, act, to IT best practice generally, whether it be ITIL, whether it be other uh, best best practice management approaches. Um, so a little bit of background to, to who Sysop are. We've been around for a long, long time. We've been particularly successful in the, in the field of IT best practice training and consultancy, largely down to the fact that, uh, that, that we, we have a pragmatic approach. Um, we understand that best practice theory is, is great, but, uh, but actually understanding how this relates to the real world and, uh, and, and what organisational benefit we can take from this stuff is perhaps far more important to to an organization than, than perhaps just getting individuals through examinations um, the good news is from an exam point of view our pragmatic approach does tend to lead to an exceptionally high um, industry average for our, uh, our success rates across the exams so uh, it doesn't actually com compromise that anyway um, so, so we sort of feel that we have that uh, that, that double uh, double win there um, we, we, we say we have exceptional customer service. This is not just something that we pick from the sky. We, uh, we, we base that on the, the, the feedback that we get, the repeat business that we get from, from, from our customer base. And it's largely down to the fact that, uh, that, that we are a family business. It was my, my father, Stuart Sol, who founded the business back in 85. Um, his partner, Janice, is uh, our operations manager. Um, and, and between us, we, we all try and make sure that uh, that we provide the best possible service that we can for, for our customer base. So hopefully you'll uh, get to experience a bit of a flavour of, of that today. Um, the picture, an awful picture of me there without my beard, but uh, that's from, from some time ago. But I'm a, uh, uh, just to give you a bit of, bit of background to myself, I've been working in IT for, for over 
20 years um, from an ITIL point of view, and some of you may, may be familiar with ITIL, I've gone the, the full path from version two managers into ITIL three and now up, updated for four. Um, and, and these days I see myself as, well, I am the, the, the product lead for our ITIL products, as well as uh, coordinating all of our other service offerings in my role as um, director of professional services. Um, and I'm particularly passionate about IT service management, and I'm sure many of you are on this uh, on this call today, and that's uh, that's the reason why you've you've signed up for for such a webinar. Um, in terms of what we're covering today, so uh, here's here's the agenda. So we've done the welcomes and introductions. Uh, I'm going to hand across to, to Nolan in a second, uh, who's going to really take you through why the mastering IT support delivery curriculum is is different, what what the qualification scheme is all about. But specifically, we're going to focus on one of the, the courses in the in the certification scheme, the operational manager course. Um, so we'll have a look at what that is, who it's for. Uh, we're going to look at that, that particular course and, and some of the others with the MISD range are uh, positioned as, as blended learning. So we'll give you a bit of an insight into what that is and what the benefits of that type of approach are. are. Um, we'll look at the specific operational manager course, course content. We'll have a little bit of a look about what next and then it's uh, the opportunity for you guys to, to take the floor and uh, and submit any of the questions that you've got so that we can make sure that you get everything that you want to out of uh, out of today's session um so without further ado then i'm going to hand across to to noel to pick up the the slide deck here and he, he he's looking forward to playing the role of uh, professor chris witty today and handing uh, uh, asking me to move the slide deck on, so I'll do that for him. Um, okay, Noel, over to you, sir. Thank you. Um, it's taken me thick end of three years to write Mastering IT Support Delivery. Um, it's all it's all stemmed from, well, I'm, what I've tried to do is to write down everything I've ever learned about managing um, an, uh, an IT support function and people's roles in it. Um, back to that. Slide, please, uh, Adam. Um, this is this is where I'm coming from. Um, I started in IT when computers were that either orange or blue and needed a fridge the size of an indoor tennis court um, to to operate. And I'm, and uh, so I'm, I'm I'm from way back then from the mainframe era, uh, and I've been in IT, I've been in support ever since then, really, um, with a, a short foray into into sales. Um, which I was rubbish at, but um, got, and then coming back to IT sport management. Um, I've written a lot of books about IT sport management, and they kind of required a recommended reading around the world in various institutions. Um, if you use the term desktop support, I invented it. If you use the, the concept of escalation in IT support, that came from me too. Um, there's, there's a few things that, that you'll notice in other frameworks, big name frameworks, that the, the the techniques have come straight from managing the IT services process. Um, it's it's uh, I've, I've been doing this for an awfully long time, uh, and continue to do it as operating mainly as a consultant, also as a trainer, um, uh, helping organisations to improve their IT support. Um, okay, so let's uh, take it from there. Adam, slide please. Okay. Um, mastering IT support delivery. I wanted to do something really, really, really practical. It's like it's the real life how to of support management. Um, how do you actually run a work group? How do you get the best out of it? Um, um, depending on which type of work group it is. I mean, um, couldn't you use the same techniques for development as you could for the service desk, or you could for the second line, or you could say for some of the more specialist second line groups like comms or EPOS? This is the only training you can buy that actually will train a second line work group head. And it's aimed really fundamentally at work group heads. It has four levels of certification from what's called the foundation level, the entry level, through um, two stages of management, um, the, the new manager and then the established manager, through to the finally the strategist, the person who defines what support looks like in this organization. It's practical and tested. The, every single thing in MISD is being used some, successfully somewhere in the world. Um, it, all this stuff is proven, and it's it has um, a fundamentally statistical approach. There's no 
Um, there's no kind of, uh, shall we have a service desk? Yes, because that's the convention. No, we'll have a service desk because there is a science that we can bring to bear on support that suggests a service desk or another approach is the, is the, is the, the best way to go. And it's delivered as blended learning and blended learning is a um, well, it's, it's, it's definitely a post COVID thing. It's um, once upon a time, this used to be a classroom course. It's been completely rewritten um, as a result of the, uh, of, of, of the need for blended learning these days. So what happens at the beginning when you first sign up for the course is you get delivered the body of knowledge of the course that you're currently taking. Uh, at, at the moment, we're focusing on the operational manager course, more of the various types of course as we go through. So you get the get the book to study and that contains all the slides and all the text and and you're given a, a plan uh, to follow, which is you study certain modules at a certain time and then that and then that 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 module is then the subject of a two and a half hour tutorial and that happens three times as you go through the course. Um, so, so so you're 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 doing study on your own at your own pace. Um, uh, with with um, all the materials in front of you, but then we have these tutorials um, every two weeks or so, or every week or so, um, where you meet the tutor and you bring with you the, um, the the things you've already studied and questions, for example, of how you would go about implementing that in your own office, and then we can discuss that in practical terms actually during the tutorial. Slide, please, Adam. Okay. Um, the basis of MISD is IT support professionalism. Oh, have you ever met a technical manager who um, was a technician first and then was promoted to manager because he was the he was the most senior person there? And what he does is just carry on being a senior technician, except with more money in his pocket. Um, what I would love to see and what we all want to work for are genuinely professional managers. And that's what MASD is designed to produce, um, to turn out managers who take ownership of their departments and run their departments. Um, they're attentive and capable. They make decisions based on science and not convention. They realize that there is a business purpose to IT support. There is, by the way, um, just for, in, for instance, um, it's commonly thought that what IT support is there for is to solve problems with when computers go wrong or when users can't use their computers to the best of their ability. No, that's not what it's for. That's not why, why IT support exists. IT support exists to restore users to productivity when that productivity has been impeded by a failure in IT or its usage. It's all about user productivity and user productivity translates to the fiscal turnover of the organization. You can work it out. You can work out exactly how much um, what you do in IT support is worth and it's worth many, many, many times more than, uh, the, the, than the cost of your your group of technicians. Every single uh, support organization, even in the public sector, currently listening to this is making a monstrous, monstrous profit for their organizations. Every single one. It's and that's because there's a focus on user productivity, not just the machinery of delivering support. It's not all about processes. It's about uh, pragmatic interactions between one another and between the and, and between yourselves and the users to actually produce um, a, a service that makes business sense to produce it, not just political sense or conventional sense or procedural sense. It makes business sense. There are uh, we want no backlogs and no causes of backlogs. Backlogs are really really bad. Backlogs are a mountain of work that you'll never get done. Backlogs are the sort of thing where your staff can come into work in the morning and work and work and work and work and work and then go home and then come in the following day and the backlog is exactly the same size as it was the day before. I, I'm, let's get rid of backlogs. Let's 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 eradicate them altogether. Let's um let's have the service. Um, so smooth and so slick, there's no need for a backlog. Uh, or the only thing that's in a backlog is because it's deliberately pending something that's out with supports control. And it's entirely possible. I I'll give you, a, for instance, look at your own backlog. Is your backlog rising inexorably 
or is it just kind of bobbing along? It's down a bit, then it's up a bit, then it's down a bit. Particularly, it goes up a bit in um, in in August and September when people are on leave, and then it goes down a bit, and then and so on. And or it or it goes down a bit at the weekends, and, and it goes up again on Monday, and and it keeps bobbing along at more or less this level. What that actually means is that somehow you arrived at a position whereby you can deal with all the work. The incoming requests, the number of incoming requests largely um, equals the number of outgoing resolutions. And if you've arrived at that without science, then the scope for making the job of IT support a lot more fun than it might be now. No single points of failure. That is, um, you know that that one guy who knows absolutely everything about technology XYZ. And that's great. The scope for us to have sub subject matter experts. But what happens if that guy goes on holiday or goes under a bus? I mean, what happens to our ability to deliver our service then? Meanwhile, can we not perhaps um, um, have a program of improving skill sets within the support group that means there are no single points of failure. There is coverage for absolutely everything. And that means that you've got a transparent service to the users that's always, that's slick, that's end to end, that's always available, and it doesn't necessarily rely on single experts. We want our IT support to be efficient and productive. And most importantly, we want it to have flexible and engage staff. I've got a maxim. If you if you want to improve IT support, start with job satisfaction. Once that's in place, everything becomes possible. So in other words, start with the job satisfaction of your of your technical staff, and then we can see what else we can do with the services as a result. Um, slide, please, Adam. This is the thing that first kind of prompted me to um, to write MISD. I was really embarrassed by the IT crowd. Just how big a mass market joke does IT support have to be before Channel Channel 4 commissions a, a prime time sitcom about it and then resells it and syndicates it to seven different countries? Um, and I thought, do I really want that to be the representation of our industry? But unfortunately, it is. And it must be because that so many people have that um, experience with IT support, they actually do um, um, ex uh, sometimes expect their users to switch it off and switch it on again. We're better than that. We can organize ourselves much better than that. Slide please, Adam. Why is MISD different? It is deeply, and I emphasize deeply how to. It's practical all the way. It shows you how to do your job and how to be successful at it and how to ensure your people will be successful at it as well. It's not about generic process, um, change this, problem that, knowledge the other, but it's work groups for specific. It's how do you run the work group to get the best out of your techs and importantly, to enable your techs to get the best out of you because everybody wants to work for a good manager. If you have to work for a manager, it should be a good one. And how do you as the manager make that then benefit the business? That's what, that's what MASD is largely about. Slide please, Adam. To kind of emphasize some of these differences here, this is a bit tricky because I've got this uh, odd menu um, in front of in front of my slides and I, I'm not sure how to get rid of it, so I can't see that. Ah, oh, it's better. Yeah, um, uh, MISD is the, the first column on the left hand side and the other key, um, if you like, candidates, not candidates, representatives in the, in, in the in the industry of training IT support staff are also there recognized. Now, it's because MISD sp specifically deals with IT support and the management of IT support. So there's service desk manager how to. No, there isn't in ITIL. No, there isn't in COBIT. That's not what they're about. There is in 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 in, in SDI, and I understand that um, quite rightly that um, that SysOp offer SDI courses as well. But the Microsoft course is about supporting just Microsoft products. So it's not about the how to for management. The technical work group manager how to the um the 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 chap who runs the second line work groups yes that's well represented that's what OMC is all about 
um, the course that we're about to talk to talk about specifically later. That's not covered in ITIL because they're about processes. Same with COBIT. It's not covered in SDI either uh, because, of course, they are the Service Desk Institute and it's not covered in Microsoft. Service Desk staff, how to? Yes, definitely. In, in other words, it goes, the, the, the training that we will give your staff is how, how to manage you to make sure that they're successful. Uh, how to understand their role in the business. We won't teach them all about customer service and if you smile at the user, that'll make the user feel better because that's nonsense. Um, it's not about customer service necessarily. It's about professionalism. And that's what our, our um, uh, courses for operational staff will teach. A second second line is the same again. Whereas ITIL and COBIT they cover their own area, and Microsoft only deal with the technical stuff. Um, SDI uh, doesn't have anything for second line staff, but that's one of our focuses. Training for newly promoted managers. SDI goes as far as team leader. This is a big one in MISD. A big one. That transition that a technician has to make to become a manager so that the people that report to that newly promoted manager actually benefit from that person being a manager. We're, we have a course here, and I'll go into it in a bit more detail later on, that's designed to, to help technicians make that mentality, that philosophical transition. Support strategy, how to. Um, take a look at your current support structure. You may have a service desk. You might have desktop support. You might have some specialist, specialist sports as well, um, depending on, your, on, on, um, on the industry that you're in. But who decided how, how many of those groups there should be, what their function should be, how they should interact, and uh, how big they should be, um, and, and what their key processes in them and key deliverables should be. Who decided that? Or did you just get it in a book from ITIL? It, um, I, a properly run IT support needs strategy, and that's why there's a strategy course as well. External support. Um, uh, in uh, in OMC under the courses in MISD, we have a, a kind of module that focuses on how support is different for the external support providers and how internal support providers, such as those who work for corporations and, uh, and businesses, uh, can go about um, working alongside those external providers and for the external providers, how their work is different and, um, and, what, uh, and what they should consider. Um, that's there in MISD. It's not represented anywhere else in the industry. It works in small and large organizations. Well, SDI clearly does. So does Microsoft because it's dealing with the technical stuff. Um, but if you're um, if you're dealing with some of the bigger frameworks, it has a kind of expectation that there are 140 odd roles, for example, that have to be covered in a full implementation of ITIL. There's no None of that in, in mastering IT support delivery is entirely scalable because the only real relationship is between a manager and an operative. And there might be multiple operatives and there might be might be multiple groups. But fundamentally, it's that relationship between the manager and the operative that produces a slick service. And because you've got it down to that level of granularity, you can start with two people and you can go to hundreds of people. And I have done on many occasions. A target market is not just um, IT, it's human resources as well. If we're going to offer something that develops uh, um, technical managers, that develops fully scaled operational managers, and also develops the staff to understand their business position in the organization, that's a human resources uh, issue as well as it is an IT issue. Um, so human resources can take our MISD and use it to develop their, te their technical staff. Um, the potential IT support audience, which I'll have a look at later on because it's um, this is interesting, is all of IT. Um, ITIL only ever talks about the service desk, so does COBIT. SDI only ever talks about the service desk and Microsoft focuses on technicians. But there are reasons why um, M MISD it focuses on the whole of IT because, well, every single technical group might be called upon to provide some modicum of support even the developers from time to time.
Um, and the technical IT product content, we don't have anything at all about technical about about technical matters. It's all about um, about about the management of support. Microsoft, of course, specialises on the technical side. Slide, please, Adam. So let's have a look, a look now at the courses and certificates that are involved in the Mastering IT Support Delivery Platform. The foundation and operative is the, is the, is the starter, if you like. Um, that's for potentially all IT staff um, to understand um, the MISD philosophy and to understand then their role in the business and their role in support and uh, their behaviour towards their managers and towards their customers without going into the twee customer experience thing. We go a bit deeper than that. Aspiring manager, which I've already alluded to, is for developing the mentality of technicians who are becoming managers. So think about it. If you're a technician, you have been told to react to a certain stimulus, for example, a, a, a ticket being escalated to you, a call coming in. Um, um, in a, you're, you're an operative. Your job is to deliver something from your well-developed skill set on, on being prompted to do so. When you're a manager, that's no longer the case. You can't, it, 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 you're not working to somebody else's instructions. You're actually inventing those instructions based on your interpretation of what the service is that your work group is being called on to produce. You no longer have your, your, your face close up to, uh, to diagnosis. Um, I mean, what, what's diagnosis? Diagnosis is the mental process by which a technician, uh, when being presented with a technical problem um, uh, from an existing IT estate realizes that what this really needs is to ask the right the question of this technology is not in a currently working state. What options do I have and what parameters are there to adjust in order to restore that technology to a working state? Those parameters already exist. They were designed into the technology. The skill of the technician is to work out which of those multiple parameters um, are the ones that should be adjusted and by how much. And that's how resolution is produced. And that process of deciding on, uh, on the adjustment of, of known parameters, that's called diagnosis. When you're a manager, you don't have the luxury of something having been pre-designed for you. You have to design your own. You have to design your own approach to the way um, the, 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 uh, the workload is, is, is coming upon you, where it comes from and what type of work, uh, workload it is. You have to decide how to skill up your staff to meet, to meet that workload. You have to be able to work out how many staff you need to be able to, to, to meet that workload. It's more um, a question of the orchestration of resources against uh, a, a measured demand than it is just dealing with existing parameters. When you're a manager, you don't deal with existing parameters, you invent the parameters. And that leap, that philosophical leap, is one that not all pr newly promoted managers uh, make. The problem is always um, in, in IT that where do you get your managers from? Well, we have a tendency to hire technicians. You always hire the best technicians you can. Of course you do, because you want to deliver the best service, and that's great. But sooner or later, you need a manager, and you look around your pool of talent, and all you have is technicians. Technicians who focus on individual technologies and the parameters therein. Who do you promote? Somebody who has to at least show the an indication towards the nature of management, and then we can develop that. Well, that's what aspiring manager is for. Operational manager is for the, the head of any technical work group in IT, where that work group will have um, a support responsibility. But let's look at that uh, from another point of view. Take, for example, the networks guys. They'll, be, um, they'll have a, 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 a responsibility for keeping the machinery going. They'll be, um, they will have a maintenance responsibility. They'll have um, a responsibility for, uh, for keeping technology up to date. They'll have a responsibility for, for developing new technologies to carry new workloads. Um, they'll have all that to do, so they'll have very much a project bias and then somebody goes and sends them a, te a technical inquiry that we couldn't solve at desktop support. What do you think is going to be their priority? Their first priority is, of course, the design 
um, uh, requirement. But a, and a support call to an organization like that is an interruption. So how should those groups organize themselves to be able to get all the projects done, get all the maintenance done, get all the BAU done, and also be able to respond really quickly and really slickly to tech support and inquiries that are hitting them. And that can be any work group in IT that can be faced with that. And that's what operational manager focuses on. Um, for for example, if I can if I can organize and orchestrate my resources well enough, and I've got to focus on job satisfaction because of my um, my staff engagement policy, then I can make the work more fun because I can organize it in such a way that all the regular stuff that we that we can anticipate can be ring fenced, coped with, dealt with, and then that leaves more resources available for the stuff that technicians love doing like the projects um like the um the investigations like the self de technical self development because after all most technicians came into IT because well they were technically inclined in the first place and if they were technically inclined in the per first place there's their motivation right there if i can harness that uh, and then turn it into a means of job satisfaction then i can use that to produce services Finally, um, once you've, you've had an operational manager certificate for six months or so, you'll get the um, the, op the option to take the strategy manager course. And the strategy manager course, that's the one that deals with the business reasons for the existence of any technical work group in IT. Somebody has to decide what should be the orientation of this of this IT department, what technical work groups should exist, what size they should be, how they should interact, uh, how how they should interact with the both the technologies and the customers. Anyway, that's that's a, a, a map of the um, of the four areas of um, of MISD. Slide, please, Adam. The operational manager certificate, the big one that we're talking about at the moment. This 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 course is actually going to run at CISOP next month. Um, what is it? Who is it for? We'll have a look at the benefits of blended learning and um, and then we'll have a look at the actual content as well. Um, here's the thing, though. It's not common sense as <laughs> as so many apparently soft skills courses um, seem to be. Um, MISD is not common sense. If it were, we'd all be working for brilliant managers because most people have common sense. Um, um, don't answer the question, but do you have? Do you work for a brilliant manager? Have you always worked for a brilliant manager? Would you like to be one? That's the thing. Slide, please, Adam. So OMC is the practical detail of running a technical work group. It's big questions that it deals with. How do you assess the workload? How do you apply your resources to it? Where do you get those resources and how do you get those resources? How do you get the best out of your people? How do they get the best out of their job? How can you make sure that the reactive stuff gets done and the proactive stuff also has the requisite number of staff? We have all sorts of techniques in OMC for, for looking at just those, those, those issues. It's all about, yeah, it's all about people. OK, sorry, Adam. Yeah, you can go go for the next slide. Um, here's the indication I've, I've, I've put red boxes around uh, well, I've just come up with them um, with an archetypal IT department, if you like, and and I've put red boxes around those types of um, of of areas that are currently a um, MISD is aimed at. So, um, what I have done the data center depends whether they solve problems as well as um as, as as well as maintaining the kit. However, the service desk, desktop support, server support, classic ones, communications, audio visual network support, developers clearly because often they're supporting the business applications, um, uh, um, uh, um, apps and systems maintenance, business app support, those are the ones that are classically um, the, 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 the target areas for OMC. It's managers of any group providing support, especially if that's not all their group does. Slide please, Adam. OK, this was back to me, Noel. Yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah, we'll give you, give you a little rest. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think that uh, one of the things that, that we're, we're, CISOP were keen to put in place when, when working with Noel um, 
we're, as many of you know, we're, we're, we're huge advocates of, of IT best practice generally, and, and, and ITIL is the core of everything that we do. But I think that a lot of what Noel has said so far in terms of, um, of the, the content of, um, of, of MISD in the practical sense, uh, I think it, it does kind of go, go hand in hand with the, the, the theoretical approach from, from other frameworks where perhaps there isn't the emphasis on, on how to do things. So um, I mentioned right at the very start of our introductions, pragmatic approach generally is, 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 is what we're keen to sort of see because we want to, to directly see organisational benefit. And I think that this, uh, this scheme does just that. Um, and and the reason why I'm just sort of covering that at this point is to sort of say, well, another aspect to that is Noel, Noel indicated that uh, that the current um, COVID restrictions and working from home has sort of uh, pushed us down the path of, of blended learning. Well, I mean, he's right. I mean, we're, uh, we're we're doing virtual training at the moment as opposed to sort of classroom training. We're, we're starting to move things back again, thankfully, as uh, as, as we get to grips with the, with the, with the pandemic, um, but this this blended learning approach has has arisen and actually presents us with um, perhaps more of a unique approach to to really truly embrace the the, the content. So I want to just just take you through that really and and, and introduce what's what's coming up with that. Um, so as Noel said, blended learning we're talking about a combination of self study and um, tutor led sessions delivered over uh, conferencing tools like. Teams or Zoom or, or whatever it, it might well be, um, but uh, but it breaks down in a bit more detail as the following. So um, the operational manager course comes with a significant uh, and comprehensive body of knowledge, which we we want to give you access to in as, as soon as we possibly can to allow you to uh, um, to, to read up on on that content. Uh, we'll give you some specific guidance on on which which sections we want you to to cover prior to each of, of the the sessions and then over the duration of the the course there will be four remote sessions indicated one is 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 only an hour it's uh um, introduce you to the materials, get you familiar with with the logistics, everything that's going on. So introductions, course format, and set expectations of you in terms of uh, uh, the amount of work that we, that we expect you to to put in to to adequately prepare for 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 the examination and, and for you to adequately embrace the the, the materials. Um, and then we'll have another a further three sessions. Sessions two and three will be uh, two and a half hours where. Um, we'll, we will go through some of the content that uh, that you've covered, but we're really looking to, um, to, to to ensure that you've understood what you've learned so far, give you the opportunity to ask questions, enable us to to, to discuss things and, and, and uh, engage your understanding through that, as well as introduce some some quizzes as well to uh, to really ensure that things are going along the right path. So we'll have two sessions which are like that. And then the final session, Again, it's two and a half hours. It's kind of a bit of a mop up. We'll, we'll finish off the final sections. Um, and it's actually in this remote session where we would run the, the examination. So the exam is, is invigilated via, via a webcam at the, at the end of that, uh, that particular session. So in between remote sessions, guidance is provided on what study is to be completed prior to the next session. So we're giving you that specific guidance to enable you to go away and uh, and, and, and do that self-study with with the the focus on what's needed, and then we, we've got the touch points for you to come back and to be able to uh, um, ask those questions and develop understanding in areas, but where perhaps you have a little bit of uncertainty. So in terms of the exam, then it's um, it's a remote proctored exam using a webcam. So there's an expectation that you have that available. Um, we will. Uh, we're looking to to pull together a number of people to do these things at the same time. So the idea is that we're we're looking at all delegates through this facility. The exam itself is forty multiple choice. This is this exam for operational manager. Um, forty multiple choice questions, um, and we're looking at giving you eighty minutes to complete that. Twenty eight out of forty is the pass mark, which is which is seventy percent. The way that it works is we get you to um, submit your your answer sheet. Um, and it'll take us uh, up to two weeks to, uh, to to go through and come back to you with a uh, an indication of, uh, of of your score and a successful uh, exam. Or, or unfortunately, if there is a is a failure there, if there is a failure, then there's an opportunity for you to take uh, examination resits. Um, but we only allow two resits, and the idea is that if somebody 
has been unfortunate enough to uh, to ultimately fail three exams, then perhaps they, they would need to be looking at retaking the full course again or maybe just, just leave it from there. The main reason why I wanted to chip in at this point is to, to, to really clearly outline to you that um, that we have uh, an upcoming cohort of people. We've got, we've got uh, a course running and the first session, this is the, the one hour remote session, begins on Friday the 18th of June. So prior to that, we will be submitting the uh, the operational manager body of knowledge and giving you the uh, uh, the information for you to start your, your study. Um, and then on the 2nd of July, 9th of July and the 16th of July, we're running remote sessions two, three and four with the exam intended to be at, uh, at the end of uh, the, the day on the, the Friday, the 16th of July. So uh, if you or your colleagues uh, are genuinely interested in this, um, I've got to come back to this in a, in a short while. Uh, where we're, we're looking to um, promote this with a special offer. So if this does sound like something that you want to look at and these dates work for you or your colleagues, then uh, feel free to uh, get in contact with us after after the event and respond to the communications that that, uh, that I send out afterwards. Noel, back to you. Just a bit more on the blended learning approach and what you see the benefits of those being. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, oh, I'm feeding back on myself. It's OK from our side, Noel, so... OK. okay. Um, you will get a copy of absolutely everything um, with, in, in, the, in the body of knowledge, all the slides and uh, hey, uh, all, by all the slides, there are 200, uh, the 263 of them um, and, the, and the body of knowledge is a sizable book. I mean, we're talking, talking the, the, the other side of 65,000 words. Uh, so there's quite a bit of study to be done. It's high quality stuff. Um, one of the things we like about blended learning is there's no need to travel. Um, you're still around if there's an office problem. They, you're, st you're still there to be called upon. The tutorials, um, make use of the tutorials. I've got a script, of course I do when I deliver the tutorials, but one of the things I want them to be there for is for you to bring your particular take on the material and say, I'd like to be able to implement that for my team. Um, Here's an example. What would you do? Um, um, and, and we could discuss things that are specific to your needs. Take your own time. That's, you can you can do this. You can make this study whenever you like. It's not that you're packed into a room at nine o'clock and you're allowed out of the room at half past four. And in the meantime, you just listen to a droning lecturer. There's none of that. It's up to you to 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 do the, the learning your way and the tutorials. You can make use of those as well. I'd just, just like to point out that sure. that's this stage, Noel, that of course, when Noel's referring to droning lecturers, he's not talking about any of the sysop guys. <laughs> he's talking about himself. <laughs> <laughs> talking about the, the wider requirement, but yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Uh, next slide. Thank you. Uh, here are the modules for OMC. It's divided into seven modules and an epilogue. Um, the epilogue is very much uh, final reminders of key things that I've found keep coming up time and time again. The reasons why support managers fail and conversely, the reasons why they succeed. Course introduction, OMC in context um, against other industry frameworks as well. It's philosophical approach and instructions on how to pass the exam. So you know what you're up against right at the beginning. And then we look at the role of the manager, uh, defining what manager actually means. The management map, you want to see the management map. It's a huge complex Venn diagram that um, makes it clear just how complex the concept, uh, the concept of, uh, of management is, and especially in an IT support context. There is quite a bit to learn. Um, we'll be looking particularly though at what well-run support actually looks like. Then in module three, we go from management to uh, leadership. What's the difference between good leadership and bad leadership? And why is it that leaders get followers? And why is it also sometimes that they attract suspicion? And we'll be looking at how, how to not micromanage. In, in there, we're going to, the differences between leadership and management are going to be pretty stark. Uh, you can make use of both, um, but you can also make use of, um, of a deft blend of those two roles to, to run your work group in specific ways. 
Well, look at planning for the workload. Um, and by planning for the workload, I literally mean that, the anticipation of what's going to hit you. Um, all too often, tech support departments and IT support departments are known for existing and then the phone rings or existing and then a and then a ticket comes in um we're not going to do it that way we're going to we're going to plan for the workload we'll be using the rmap quadrants we'll be using airline c's to actually find out how much work you're going to you're you're going to be dealing with and how it's going to arrive in terms of queues we're going to be making sure that you've got plenty of staff for projects and for the fun things that 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 can be done in IT support rather than just the reactive stuff. And it's going to tell you stuff that most ITSM, ITSM software can't tell you. All those statistics that ITSM software gives you, you know what they're all aimed at? Service level. All about the a ticket came in then, it was resolved then. Did we match the service level target? We're going to go way deeper than that. What service level target? Where did that come from? You got a priority of four hours. Why four hours? Why not twenty-seven and a quarter minutes? Why? Wh um, why do P1s look like this and P4s look like this? Guess what? There's not a single ITSM software package on the market that genuinely prioritizes work for you. But we're going to learn about prioritizing work. Um, it, I want to get down to that level of, of practicality. When, you, when you've got 300 outstanding inquiries and you've got four priorities, that's not prioritization, it's categorization. So you've got first in, first out. There are ways that you can prioritize um, your IT support work, even when you're prioritizing dealing with the reactive stuff against dealing with the proactive stuff. There are ways where you can you can assess those priorities against one another as well. So we're, we're going to be planning for the workload. Then we're going to get into processes and, and relationships. Oh, the second line, oh, classic, happens to me all the time, but there was one particular um, consultancy engagement I was involved in where um, I went to see the um, well, as was then help desk manager. I needed to come in, Noel, because honestly, we, we, we take these calls, we document them, we send them to um, off to the desktop support guys. And for all the good it does, we might as well have screwed it up into a piece of paper or chucked it in the canal um because they, they never respond they don't get back to the user they never tell us what they've done they always uh, they always um in, instead of writing the actual solution in the in the ticket they just write sorted full stop um so i thought well i better find out what's going on so i, I went to see the the second line manager don't talk to me about the help desk they never fill the calls in properly we always have to follow up on everything and I, honestly i wanted to take these two guys out and say talk to one another it's a process and relationship thing you both have dependencies upon one another this stuff can be worked out so the 1L first line, second line, 1L, 2L relationship, first line and second line. Managing customers. There is a way of managing customers. Here's the thing. Do you want to produce customer satisfaction? What do you do? Stick to the service levels? No. No customer measures you on, the, on whether you adhere to the service level targets. They measure you on one thing only, and that is whether you met their expectations. And if you don't set their expectations, where will they get them from? I, I, I'm giving the course. I'll do that later on when we actually do uh, um, get get into the the syllabus. Managing your boss, um, uh, managing the dependencies between you and other working groups, managing the users. Okay. Next uh, module six, we'll be talking about delivering your services. What does the ideal support person look like? How do you make sure that person has got the right skills? Um, we'll be showing you ways where you can ensure your people have high levels of skill without sending them on, a, on, a, on an array of courses. You can send them on courses if you like, but we've got ways of, of, of developing their skills in such a way that they can be supremely successful. The techniques that I'll show you, I've used to produce um, fixed times on, a, on the first line of in excess of 90%. Um, I'll, I'll also show you how um, the productivity of the second line in, in most IT organizations has been falling steadily over the past few years, and it doesn't have to be that way. So we'll be looking at ideal support people, skill set management, statistical management, all very statistical. We, we need 
I mean, the, the, there's only one reason to produce a, a statistic, produce a report of any description, and that's to be able to make a decision. And once you can make a decision, you can take action. Any report that doesn't enable you to make a decision is at best interesting. We're going to be using statistics for real life purposes. So when we're looking at um, the importance of productivity, I pretty much guarantee that if you can follow this stuff that comes up in OMC, you'll smash your SLA targets every time. It's, um, it's actually not that hard, but um, I'll be showing you techniques for, for doing that and how to allocate resources to work. So you don't, it's not just a matter of just um, having a load of work come in so that everybody's running around trying to do their best with it. We're going to do some proper organized resource allocation. And then the staff engagement thing. Um, I want your staff to be able to go home knowing that the work they did today was excellent and constituted a success by an objective measure. I'd like them to go home elated rather than just exhausted. Um, uh, and we, so I, I, that's kind of built into MISD. How to motivate disengaged people. Job satisfaction, the key to everything. I'm also going to dispense with the, with the myth of, of high morale. Morale and motivation are not alternative words for the same thing. They actually are, are diametrically opposed. And if you have high morale, that might actually be the opposite of high motivation. Um, so I'm gonna, we're going to be look at, looking at, 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 the, at the true nature of motivation. What Douglas McGregor did that Mas, Maslow didn't. Um, so in other words, we're looking, we'll, we'll be looking at, um, at Maslow's hierarchy of needs and seeing whether that still applies in um, in first world organizations. But we'll also be looking at Douglas McGregor, this theory X and theory Y, because um, oh, I'm getting into the course material again. Um, built an enjoyment for, for support stuff. That's what I'm going to try and do. And then finally, the epilogue just before the exam will be the final reminders of things that I've seen um, time and time again of what makes support managers successful in service desks, in, in desktop support, in development, um, all, all those areas of IT. Slide, please, Adam. OK, I think this is back to me, Noel. I um, think so, yeah. Yeah, OK. So... First of all, uh, we're not quite finished yet, but uh, I like to just just post nice and early our uh, our customer satisfaction survey. Uh, I've just stuck that in the in the chat facility there. Um, obviously, we, we always say that, that that feedback is a gift. We're all about wanting to improve the way that we do things, so we do value your feedback. So I would appreciate if you take a few minutes to uh, to just put a, submit that that survey for us you can do do that now or you can listen to my messages and, uh, and and do it at the end of the event that's not a problem but we do appreciate that just to point out that there is a, a question on there that that's asking you about opting into sort of marketing communications and, and, and i think instinctively people don't want to do those things but uh, just to let you know that it's it's events like today that we we, we advertise through that uh, um, through that those, those facilities so um you know we, we want to make sure that uh, that you are receiving them if you want if you have found it useful today and you do want to attend future events then make sure that you do opt in because we would be even if you are currently we would we our process is such we would take you off the system um somebody's questioning whether what where the link is i've just resent it there again in the survey monkey if, if for some reason you're having issues getting that then when you get my email later on it will also contain a link to this to the survey monkey feedback form so you should be able to, to handle it through there um in terms of what next after operational manager though this is this is your slide i think yes i think so um in 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 terms of, of what you would do next um from the uh, syllabus point of view um, the next thing I do is you'll be going back with a load of new ideas nobody else will have those ideas because they're not common sense so what I would suggest you do is the people who report to you the team leaders the supervisors and so on put them through aspiring manager so they get to realize why it is you think the way you think now so they so so that they can also know how to run a work group and they can be a good place for you to delegate responsibility to um so and, and turn them into turn them into managers rather than just better take better paid technicians 
You can also put your staff through foundation and operative, which is a, a purely online course. So they understand what you and they get out of your management method. And they can also learn how to how, how to get the best out of their jobs as well. It, uh, and, and it's part of this whole professionalism concept. Then in a few months time, put yourself through strategy manager. Show your IT department how to really organize IT support because somebody has to be able to design the support service. Slide, please, Adam. Yeah, thank you, Noel. Um, so back to me. So just to say that I mentioned this earlier, the next cohort of the operational manager course is coming up. It's not that far off, we're only a month away. Um, so if, if you like what you've seen today for yourself or, or colleagues, ask me for further information, that's fine. But uh, this this particular cohort is on special offer, so you may want to have a look at that and book onto onto these dates going into into the summer. So may again, I, may I make a suggestion there, Adam. Yeah, of course. The, the sooner the the sooner you book on the course, the sooner you get the workbook, the body of knowledge. Uh, and given that it's quite a bit of a study to be doing, it, it might be best to make the make the most of the time. Okay, thank you, Noel. Yeah, so that I'll, I'll have information of this in the email that I send across today, so you can you can follow that up if uh, if, if that's of interest. Um, I'm not going to go through all of this in detail, but that link will also contain details of other special offers that we've got on currently. So we've not really talked about this stuff today in great detail, but ITIL4 training, whether it's foundation or some of the advanced training stuff, we've got some promotions on at the moment that may be of interest again for yourself or your colleagues. Same thing with the uh, upcoming courses that we've got for uh, for the Service Desk Institute uh, stuff. And if uh, we have run uh, some of these webinars previously, um, giving a bit more information on what's on covered on these courses, which we have recorded. So I'll I'll make sure that you get a link to our YouTube channel if if you want to know more about these courses. Then you can go back and, uh, and take a look at those those particular links as well. Um, Final reminder to say that, uh, that if you can provide us with some feedback, that would be of, of great use to us. Um, we're going to move on to on to Q&A at the moment. Um, I've, I've not, if I'm honest, we're, we've got four minutes to go before we, we've got our finish time. I've not seen any direct questions come through to us. Um, Somebody has asked the question, can the slides also be shared with us? Yes, we will be uh, submitting the uh, a copy of the recording of this session as well as uh, a copy of the slides as well. So we'll we'll definitely get that for you. Um, just in it, just to get uh, things moving with Q and A. Um, I say we've only got a few minutes. So I'll I'll ask Noel a question for him to answer, and if if we don't get any more questions in that in, whilst he's answering that one, then we'll wrap it up. But my question to you, Noel, is um, OK, we want these guys to, to sign up for this this next cohort of operational manager, as you've suggested. Mm. Uh, can, can you pick out one or two of the highlights that a delegate will do differently when they get back to their organisation, having attended the course and achieved the qualification? Uh, well, yes, for a start, you'll have a business basis on 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 why you do things. You'll suddenly realise that um, the the importance of your organize of, of your organisation. You're not just a group of technicians. You're a business tool, and you will know the 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 meaning of that business tool. You might well have. Oh, I'll tell you one thing. You will definitely get. You'll definitely have a um of a. Uh, a, a very advanced and slick way of developing the skills of your staff um, that uses a skills matrix but goes way, way deeper than that um, so that you can get people up to um, what to try and produce what I call a peer group. Um, you know, DeMarco and Lister's the black team, They're a team of excellence of people who are all more or less at the same level but in their own area of, areas of specialisation and you can develop that really really quickly astonishingly quickly you can have you can have people become um experts in in matters of oh 20 minutes here or there uh, reading from scripts I, I don't want to go into too much detail so that, so there'll be that you'll know how to uh, anticipate the um the whole panoply of the workload that you'll be that you'll be dealing with because of the rmap quadrants the administrative stuff the reactive stuff the plan stuff the maintenance stuff and the projects that there'll be there'll be techniques for managing all that and i could go on forever adam <laughs> 
Yeah, so <laughs> too many highlights to go through all of them. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's brilliant. No, that's 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 a great insight. Thank you for that. Uh, no other questions have come forward. I'm, I'm sort of looking at the time and realizing that we're, uh, our hour is is nearly up. So. I'm going to wrap things up there then. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, Noel, for for sharing that that with us. Uh, you know, we, I think that uh, the the attendance that we've got is good, and hopefully, it gives you all a good good flavour of, of of what to expect from this qualification scheme. And I hope it has genuinely uh, aroused an interest. Certainly, uh, the operational manager course, which is which is coming up, um, and obviously the, uh, the the other modules. You may have uh, um, people in mind who, who who you may want to get signed up for those events as well. So thank you all all for your attendance. Um, I'm going to wrap things up there now. I'll stick around for a, for a minute or so to see if any questions do come through. But uh, have a great weekend, all. Uh, yeah, any final comments, Noel? I think I've done enough talking. Now. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. But thank you, guys. Have a great weekend, and uh, I'm sure we'll see you on another event soon. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks. Bye bye. Thanks.